Hi there. Uh, just sending this message out uh, because I've been uh, yeah, thinking about the first week of our national lockdown that we've had and uh, meditating and praying and asking the Lord for some guidance as I did uh, just before the announcement was made. So before we start, I'd just like to open up in prayer. So Father God, we just thank you for your, your life that you give us and for your your guidance that you're providing for us during this time. Uh, we, we thank you for who you are, what you're doing, and for the love that you bring to all the people that you that are called by your name. Father God, we just ask that uh, the people that don't know you yet have an opportunity to come to know you because it's uh, your will that everybody gets to know you and enter into eternal life with you. Thank you for this time and we just ask that you open up the hearts and minds for people to be able to receive the word as uh, as some some way to be able to be guided during this time and we thank you for your life and for your your guidance in this and we pray this in the mighty name of jesus amen so uh just wanted to touch on what came to me during my prayer uh, just before the lockdown and it was quite a strong word that came to me which is you know one joshua nine but before we get into that i just want to just open up the the setting of of the book of joshua the book of joshua was quite a long time ago it was 1400 bc to about 1375 bc which was when joshua passed away but you know the, the call of god was on his life and um even moses knew that um, moses had confirmation from that from the lord uh, before he passed away and joshua responded to the call but the the opening of the book which is just our little study for tonight is is the first um, chapter and quite a packed full, uh, you know, packed full chapter to to um, meditate on and read on because you know this is a, a period of time where the Israelites were on the doorstep of crossing over to the promised land, and you know Joshua he, he heard the call and he responded, and you know Joshua is not the first, you know Joshua is the sixth book of the the Old Testament, and also the first group of former prophets that uh, came about, so you know. He, he actually, Joshua, the Lord spoke to Joshua, and Joshua sa says that he actually heard the call, um, three things. He heard the call in chapter 1, gives the command, and receives the encouragement. So we're going to go look into that a little bit more. But, but the first and most important thing is, is that the book of Joshua teaches the fulfillment of God's promise of blessings to Israel, depending on their cooperation. And also the fact that the Holy Spirit, which is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, was on Joshua's life, even in the Old Testament, which was Christ's presence. So, in keeping those in mind, we'll have a look at the scripture. But the first, the, 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 the scripture that came to mind during my prayer was actually 1 verse 9, which it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Powerful. Very, very powerful. But let's look at the context. Let's look at what it says before, and let's look at what it says a little bit afterwards. Because it's a bit of a journey that's been going on here. But I mean, you know, the Jordan was a river that could range anywhere between 100 feet and 1 mile in, in width. So um, he had quite a task to to cross that Jordan like, uh, you know, like the Israelites crossed the, 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 the sea when Moses held the, the rod up. And there were, there were some th powerful words that came from the Lord to Joshua, saying, first one in verse 5, saying, I will not leave you nor forsake you. And that's a powerful thing to put on someone's life, to say that. And that's what he says about every believer, born-again believer. He says, I will not leave you nor forsake you. And that's a powerful thing that will get us through a lot. But let's look at what, what else he said. He said in verse 6, be strong and of good courage. I didn't mention it once. He mentioned it four times. In verse 6, 7, 9, and 18. He mentioned those. So that was like a confirmation and a part of confirmation that allowed Joshua to know that the Lord, his God, was with him. The Lord, who was his commander, was giving him the, the divine way to be able to lead his people into the promised land. But there were three other things that, that, are, that, that stand out in, in the first chapter. The three things that come out was, is, is meditation, preparation, and obedience. So the first thing was is that God's word in verse 8, he says, God's word shall not depart from your mouth. So this is God saying, meditate, spend time, rest in me, 
and just know who I am. Be still and know that I am God. And and this is what he was saying to Joshua, is that the, my word will not depart from your mouth. In other words, hear what I'm saying and speak life into the situation. Because God was giving him download so that he could lead his people into the promised land. And he commanded Joshua, he said, don't let the word depart from your mouth. But then in verse 11, he says, prepare. And if I read prepare, what the verse says is that Joshua commanded the officers of his people saying, pass through the camp and command the people saying, prepare provisions for yourselves, for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go and to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Powerful, powerful. So now he's telling his, he's telling his guys, commanding his guys, Get your people prepared so that when we cross over, we are ready. And I think that he was probably referring to both. God was probably giving him that download so that he could pass it on, command it to the people. Not only in the physical sense, in terms of food and uh, nutrition and stuff like that, but also spiritually. Be prepared mentally. Be prepared physically so that you can withstand the, the journey that's going to be happening. And that was like saying in three days time, we're going to be going over. South Africa is not going to be in that case. We're not going to be crossing over any a pandemic in, in three days. It's going to take longer than that. So, you know, the, 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 the call was to be prepared. And what I'd like to bring into our context at the moment is that we've been given the 21-day lockdown. We're one week into the lockdown. We need to, as we've done before, prepare, but not in a panic state, but prepare in a way that will be able to sustain us. But not only in the physical sense, but also in the spiritual sense. So it's giving us the opportunity to rest, because it actually says that he's allowed his people to rest in his word, so that they can get back in line with him, both spiritually and uh, physically and mentally. So that is, a, that is quite re relevant to what's happening at the moment. But then he goes on to say, in 12 to 18, that the, the, the land will only be conquered if everyone's working together. So in other words, let's work together on this, guys. If we're going to conquer the land, let's get together. Let's all of us go over. And the only way we're going to do that is look out for each other. Because if you don't look out for each other, someone's going to be left behind. And it's going to be a, it's, not, it's not going to be what God's will is for us. And that's both physical and spiritual. So while we're looking out for each other in the physical sense, um, we're making that telephone call, buying a pack, a pack of food for somebody, um, in fact, I'm going to be putting a link below after this message so that you can have a look at it and see if you are willing to open your heart to um, sow into um, the disadvantaged communities. But um, the point that I'm trying to make is that while we're looking out for ourselves, we also need to look out for each other. We're not perfect. I mean, we, don't, we, we can't manage to do it all the time. But if we're in a position to be able to bless somebody else, to encourage them, to equip them, if it's not through... Um, the physical food through spiritual food, or either it be through prayer or just a hello over the phone or something like that. That is where we're kind of building each other up in the body of Christ, so that when Jesus Christ comes for us and dies, well, if he comes for us for his bride again, we are really uh, spotless and blameless. The The last command that they're talking about is, is the obedience. And this is quite an interesting one because we're seeing it now on the TV. You know, he's called for obedience. The president has called for obedience and for, for people to stay indoors. And if you don't stay indoors, it's going to cause um, problems like being arrested or even death because you're going to expose yourself to the virus. So, you know, it's quite an interesting verse. And I'd like to just read it because it's, it's, if, if, you re if you hear me read this, you'll be able to put it into the context that we're in at the moment. Um, so they answer Joshua saying, all that you command us, we will do. And uh, wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only the Lord your God will be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words in all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of, of good courage. So it's a difficult one because, you know, by nature, we have been given the freedom by the Lord to be able to get on with our day and to be able to, um, uh, you know, toil um, in, in whatever it is that we do. He's, he's saying here in the word that the people need to listen to the instructions that he's giving because he was getting it from the Lord. Now, we have been praying for our president for a long time. We have been asking the Lord to guide his steps as, he, as we ask him to guide, guide our steps. And as we know, we're not perfect. We make mistakes ourselves. So we, we, by standing behind the presidents and other leaders of businesses and churches and everything, 
we are spiritually being being the army behind the commander and our great commander is the lord jesus christ but he's put people into positions to be able to guide us during the season so that's why it's important to pray for the leaders of our country and businesses and churches and everything like that so while it's a bit of a negative uh, connotation in terms of being put to death it's a stark reality of the situation that we're in because if we go out and uh, carry on uh, you know having that contact that we've had before while this pandemic plays out we could be put to death and so that's where the command is coming in from joshua to his people and his people standing behind him saying yes we will be with you so my encouragement for you is just to appreciate the fact that these um, commands if you want to call it being given by the, the government has been made in council uh, in council of of, of uh, other people who are seeking the Lord and other people that are looking out for the best interests of the people, even though it's going to damage their economy. And there will be times where we're going to have to walk through that um, that valley, if you want to call it that. But the way that we do it is through, like I said, the worship prayer and uh, and 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 reading the Bible and just getting into the Word, seeking His face in it, and also standing behind our leaders, whether it be in the church, family, all the all, all the businesses. So my encouragement for you today is just to have a look at chapter 1 of Joshua again in your own time and just meditate on it, read it, pray about it and ask how you can be involved in being able to prepare the people for this next journey as they did back in those days by crossing the, 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 the Jordan River. So in summary, I just want to put three things to you. While we've been looking at the call, uh, we looked at the call, we looked at the command and we looked at the encouragement. I also want to encourage you that meditation, preparation, and obedience is the is the order of, of, of the day. Um, and for your own benefit, it will be a, a good time to rest in his word. Retreat back into his word, just like David did. When he went into a season of, of seeking the Lord, he actually retreated, went back into the word, asked God, sought God through worship, prayer. And believe me, when you do that, you'll find that God will speak to you. And when he speaks to you, he'll confirm it. And that's the beautiful thing is when you start knowing that he's when you start receiving the confirmations, that's when you know that the Holy Spirit is, uh, is is dwelling within you too, because great is He that is in the world. It says so in one uh, one John four four. So in summary, know know your commander, know the Lord Jesus Christ. You know we're entering into a very very special time of year at the moment because over two thousand years ago, He actually went to the cross. The seven days before, which we're starting very, very soon in the next 24 hours. The seven days that he went through to be able to die for, for our sins. Let's, 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 let's seek things above and not things on, on, on the earth. Because let's look at things from the Lord Jesus Christ's perspective. Because he's seated in heaven and heavenly realms. And that's where we should be focusing our attention on. Not discarding what's actually happening right now. But just let's focus on what he's saying about the situation. We've seen beautiful things happen with the, with the waterfalls up in Zimbabwe, how they're now overflowing. And, you know, it's a stream of living waters, which is just a sign from God, you know, saying to us, yes, I'm here and I want to be able to give you the living waters that I have to give you. But you have to listen to me and see what I'm doing. So, number one, know the commander in your Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, prepare for your inheritance. Not just spiritual, not just physical with your food preparations and everything, but prepare for your inheritance by hearing the call, whether you're a far away person who hasn't known the Lord at all, or whether you are close to the Lord and seeking Him with all your heart. You know, love your Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul, but love your neighbor just as you love yourself. So what I want to ask you here is just spend a bit of time in the Word and, and prepare for your inheritance. This is your eternal inheritance inheritance that you're preparing for. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to be able to seek the Lord in, in everything that you're doing. Get, get stuck in the Word. And by the time things start getting back to normal, you'll have that routine. And by no means, I'm not perfect. I don't get it right all the time. But if you find some time, even if it's five minutes during the day, pick a book. Listen to an audio clip or YouTube or something like that. Just so that you start getting nourished. So that you can withstand the tough times through the scriptures that, that he will reveal to you because that's what the Holy Spirit is there for is to, to remind you of all these good things that he says about you because remember he hasn't given us a spirit of fear but of love, power and sound mind and that's what we need to hold on to right now during these days and I just want to encourage with you with, you with that so while we close off here I just want to thank you for listening to this message 
I want you to prayerfully consider supporting the, the, the uh, organization that's doing this food um, uh, outreach. And um, just ask the Lord what he puts on your heart to be able to do uh, with a contribution to that. And if you can't contribute, there's no condemnation in Christ. But just seek his face and ask what you can um, uh, afford to give, if anything. And if not, pick up the phone, call a friend, speak to them. Find something in the word that will be able to encourage somebody else. Because by doing so, you're going to be encouraging yourself and, and filling your spiritual self up too. So I'd like to finish off and thank you again. And I'm going to finish off in prayer so that we can meditate on these words and let it sink in. So Father God, we give you thanks and praise and glory for this time that we've had together. We ask you to just uh, ask everyone to uh, meditate through the word and prayer and even listening to this message again so that it can actually just penetrate their hearts. And Father God, while we're talking about the hearts, we ask that you just do a, do a supernatural healing on our own hearts so that we can pull out all the unforgiveness and betrayal and hurt and disappointment that's happening in our hearts right now. And let us seek your face in all things. Matthew 6.33 says it, Lord. So let's, let's walk together in faith, hope and love so that we be able to build each other up, get deeper into the word and know who you are and what you say about us. We give you thanks and praise and glory and we just ask that you provide for those that are less fortunate than us through your miraculous wonders and we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks guys and we'll see you soon.